Hi everyone and welcome to another video from DisparityPair.com. In this video we'll be talking about a cold start and everything related to it. So stay tuned. DisparityPair.com Before we start, just a few words, what is a cold start anyway? According to Wikipedia, a cold start is an attempt to start a vehicle's engine when it's cold relative to its normal operating temperature. To put it more simple, it means uh, starting the engine when it's stone cold, okay? So it hasn't been previously driven and uh, there is no temperature whatsoever. The other most uh, common thing drivers think when mentioning a cold start is starting the engine when the outside temperature is cold, like starting the car uh, during the winter season. There are two opinions on the cold start matter. Uh, one opinion is that you should start the engine and drive away immediately and the other opinion is that you should start the engine, let it idle for a bit and then drive away. On one side, people will tell you that if you drive immediately after starting the engine, you will damage the, for instance, the crankshaft bearings, while the other side will say if the oil doesn't spread around the engine block as it should, you can also damage the engine. In order to explain this better, we must go into car mechanics and car history. I hope I won't be too boring, bear with me, uh, there will be useful information for you. Now, when the engine is cold, the ECU or your car's computer gets input from all of the sensors that it should make a richer mixture. That means more fuel than air inside the mixture. This makes starting the engine much easier. But there's a problem with that regarding a cold start. You see, when the engine is cold, all of the oil is down in the oil sump. And when you start cranking, all of that oil goes up inside the engine, lubricating all of the vital parts, okay? Now, that oil also gets on the cylinder walls and on the piston rings and all of the other vital parts of the engine. As you all know, fuel is a strong solvent for oil. And what happens, the fuel mixture is richer and it starts rinsing the oil off of the cylinder walls and the piston rings. Once it's rinsed off, it starts causing more friction than needed. And friction is very bad for the engine. And this is where the problem with a cold start is. If you leave your car to idle a long period of time because of that richer mixture, it will start rinsing oil off of the uh, cylinder walls and cause more friction and seriously shorten the lifespan of the engine. Now don't get me wrong, not that you'll have to do an engine overhaul immediately or you'll catastrophically damage the engine, but the truth is if this becomes a habit and you let your car idle a long time every time you want to drive, you can damage the engine in the long run. Also, there's the matter of fuel consumption. All that fuel that you spend idling can be spent uh, to actually getting to your destination. Now for the history part, namely, where does all the waiting come from? Well, in uh, previous cars, it wasn't that simple to start the engine. Today, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is take the ignition key, start the engine and drive away. Before there was a certain procedure involving something called a choke. A choke was a lever located behind the steering wheel uh, that you had to pull before you start cranking the engine. The choke was connected with a cable to a carburetor. Engines used to have carburetors and would close a valve located on top of the carburetor and reduce the airflow into the carburetor. This would create a richer air fuel mixture and make the engine start easier. Once the engine was started, you had to push the choke back down and you could drive. If you didn't do it this way, if you didn't wait and wanted to drive right away, the car would stutter and would probably cut off. So, at least in my opinion, this is where all of the waiting part comes from. From older times when cars were different and they needed a certain procedure in order for you to drive them. Uh, it's sort of a tradition that is handed down from one generation of drivers to another. You know, the older generation tells the younger generation, wait a bit until the engine heats up and then you drive. The important thing here is to remember that with newer cars, you don't have to do this. So, how to make a cold start the right way? Well, 
if the outside temperature is normal start the car wait for about 30 seconds and start to drive however if the outer temperature is lower like in the winter season wait for a couple of minutes perhaps for the car cabin to heat up for the windshield to defrost and then leave what you should avoid is letting the car idle for 10 or 15 minutes in the driveway while waiting to leave an exception from this rule uh, may be during the winter season uh, when the temperatures are really low uh, let the car idle for a couple of minutes until you see the needle on the temperature gauge starting to climb uh, and also if you need a warm passenger a cabin like when you drive your kids perhaps even more important is how you drive the car after a cold start avoid revving the car too much for gasoline or petrol cars keep it under 3000 rpms while on diesel cars i would stick to 1500 to 2000 rpm maximum while driving keep a slower pace don't force the engine don't force the car until you see the engine temperature gauge needle climbing a bit as the temperature rises of course you can drive more freely why is this so important well once you start driving you will probably achieve engine temperature faster once you start to do this the air fuel mixture ratio will start to normalize at the same time there will be increased oil pressure inside the cylinder and uh, the rinsing effect that we've mentioned earlier will start to decrease and diminish so the sooner you start uh, driving the sooner the engine temperature will build up the sooner the rinsing effect will stop so to conclude once you start the engine start driving as soon as possible don't let the car idle for a long period of time in the driveway and then go it's useless and it may hurt the engine in the long run once you start driving don't rev up the engine too much uh, keep a slower pace until the engine gains some temperature so that's it for this time i hope the video helps if it did give us a like and subscribe it's a huge help for what we're doing also if you find the time visit us at our website despairrepair.com where you can find this tutorial in written form in more detail besides other useful car and driving tips so thanks for watching and thanks for your time.